Look at this, it's an ATI Radeon 3870X2. It's a dual graphics card that features a DVI port, an S video port, and last but not least, let's not forget, a second DVI port. And also one of the weirdest pin layouts when it comes to the 6-pin and the 8-pin. They're on the front, not the side. Which makes it much more of a hassle to plug in, but hey, it's an old GPU. We can forgive it. And on the back, we have two 3870s. If you haven't figured out from the name, that's what they are. And they're linked together, so kind of cool. But anyways, let's move on to the game. Starting off with Overwatch, the game actually ran. Is that surprising? Well, to me it is, because my 280 did not even start it. It seems the 280 did not support DirectX 10.1, whereas this thing does. You know what? That just shows you AMD ATI. The, the, the AMD bought ATI. I don't know if... I mean, ATI doesn't exist anymore, but hey... They offer good support when it comes to long-term, all right, guys? When it comes to the drivers, that's true. And when it comes to their hardware, this card shows that, in my opinion. Now, when we bumped up to 1080p, though, we lost about half our frames. Is that surprising to me? Not really. Each card only has about half a gig of VRAM. And even though it's advertised having a gig, each card can only use about half a gig. So, yeah. 1080p is not exactly the best thing for it. Let's move on to Arma 3. This game will run on anything. I'm convinced of that now. I've ran this on so many low-end cards, and they've all ran it well. That doesn't surprise me at all. At 720p low, we were at 58 FPS. It was nice and smooth. Was it 60? No. But 58 FPS is the new 60 in 2017. At least when it comes to this card. The min and the max were also very close. That's good to see. That's always great. And honestly, guys, when it comes to this game, as long as you have a good CPU, you can probably run it with most of your GPUs. Unless you have some Intel GMA graphics or some other horrendous thing. At 1080p, FPS was lost again, but not surprising. Like I said, there is only half a gig of VRAM on this card, guys. That is a probably the biggest limitation when it comes to higher resolutions. In terms of overall efficiency, though, the card runs very well. Though I'm not sure... <laughs> If Overwatch and Arma were actually running any, were actually running on both GPUs, I'm not sure if the crossfire was working or not. I had no way of testing. Windows would not show it as two different cards, so I'm not even sure if crossfire is enabled. Um, well, I do know it's enabled because in MSI uh, Afterburner CS:GO was showing as having two GPUs active, but it didn't show up in any other games. So maybe those were just running off one 3870. Makes sense though, because they're newer games, and maybe driver support just doesn't exist. I can't be 100% sure of that, and I will be looking into that further with some other Crossfire slash SLI cards, so I will get around to that eventually. In the meantime, let's finish off with our final game for the day, and that is CSGO. CSGO at 720p medium settings was running outstanding at about 88 FPS. It was perfect. It's above 60, and if you have a 60Hz monitor, it's about as smooth as you're going to get. If you have a 120Hz monitor... You asked too much. You asked for too much. But anyways, the min was horrendously low. If you're wondering why the min's always low on these CSGO vids, it's because of smoke. The benchmark map that I use, whenever there's smoke, it kills the FPS. Not sure exactly why, but old graphics cards seem to have a horrible time with smoke in CSGO. The max was 133 because if you stare at a wall, that's probably what you're going to get. And in general, the game was flowing. It was smooth and great. And it just shows you CSGO will... Well, any kind of esports title, such as CSGO, will run on pretty much basically any hardware. I mean, I ran this on an Intel Atom perfectly fine. So the fact this is running so smoothly is not surprising to me at all. You can also probably bump the graphics up to high or very high and still get above 60, potentially. I wouldn't go with anti aliasing because this card, with that half a gig of VRAM and just in general, probably isn't that good when it comes to anti aliasing So, yeah. Bumping up to 1080p, though, we did take, again, whoa, I feel, it's interesting, it's always half FPS. It, like, cuts the FPS almost in half every time. It's like 45% or something like that. It's kind of interesting, actually. But yeah, the game, you know, you didn't get uh, 60 exactly, but you were getting about 49.95. That's pretty good. Uh, surprisingly, this at 1080p, it's impressive seeing this old car that was never really designed for 1080p in the first place doing such a good job. Could you probably go higher at 1080p? Of course you could, just because bump it down to low settings. I also need to overclock the card. The card has not been overclocked. That will be a separate video that will involve a bunch of other GPUs. When I overclock GPUs, I like to put them all together in one vid, so it's kind of 
better and easier. Just doing general overclocking vid. I did one not too long ago with the, I believe it was the 8500 GT and the 8600 GT. So I will be doing something very similar to that. So look forward to seeing that. And anyways, guys, moral of the story is this card is an excellent card to this day. As long as you're not dealing with DirectX 11 or 12, you'll pretty much be able to run anything. And if you could also figure out where there's actually cross-firing more newer titles in CSGO, anything past 2012 when the driver support stops, then that'd be pretty awesome.